Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Alright, I, I was fooling around, and I, I didn't catch- I wasn't paying attention enough in the first, like, 20 seconds, so I'm starting over, alright? Um, the original link to the video, top of the description, below that, link to the Discord, love to have you. My name's Connor, I like to learn things. Let's go. Serious time, pay attention, alright? You are not ready to learn, you're in the wrong class, uh, home ec is down the hall. Am I being a jerk? I'm sorry. Just, you know, let's, let's go. Located in the northernmost Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Northumbria and bordering Scotland, Bamburgh is a site of huge significance. It was the kingdom's capital. It attracted saintly figures who helped spread Christianity amongst the pagan peoples, and it was the centre of a national and international trade network. While it was owned by King Ethelfred of Northumbria, he gave this land to his wife, Beba. The Burr was Queen Beba's Burr and became known as Beban Burr. Fans of Bernard Cornwell's books and the TV adaptation, The Last Kingdom, will spot how the writers used the name to make Beban Burr in that series. It's in these burrs that we can begin to trace the origins of castles in this country. But what do we know about the people who lived within them? Archaeologists at Bamburgh Castle have made some astounding discoveries over the years, including amongst these dunes, an Anglo-Saxon graveyard with remains dating back more than a millennium. By the 8th century, Bamburgh was a cosmopolitan centre with people travelling from across Europe. They were pilgrims. Uh, uh, just let me go back like 15 seconds. So just come on. The years, including amongst these dunes, an Anglo-Saxon graveyard with remains dating back more than a millennium. By the 8th century, Bamburgh was a cosmopolitan centre with people travelling from across Europe. They were pilgrims seeking out saints like St Oswald, a former king of Northumbria who left a permanent mark on this land. St Oswald was made famous by the medieval chronicler Bede in his ecclesiastical history of the English people, written in the 8th century. Oswald was an Anglo-Saxon king of Northumbria from 634 to 642, but he was raised in exile on the island of Iona, west of Scotland, by Irish monks. As king, he wielded political power from his capital at Bamburgh, but he was concerned for the souls of his people as well as their bodies. He was determined to bring the Celtic Christianity that had so influenced his own life to his new realm. He established the monastery on Lindisfarne, also known as Holy Island, just five miles north by sea and visible from Bamburgh. He worked with St Aidan, the first bishop there, to send missionaries nice all over the communities of northern England. Between them, they embedded Christianity permanently in the region and changed British history and religion forever. Bamburgh was the political and military arm of Lindisfarne's religious outreach. Bamburgh's strength was key to the success of their project. Astonishing archaeological finds at Bamburgh shed light on the lives of people here 1500 years ago and on the impact Oswald's determination had. The Bamburgh Research Project began an excavation in the late 90s among the sand dunes in the shadow of Bamburgh Castle. This dig revealed incredible secrets about the Burr and uncovered artefacts and bodies which tell the stories of some of the people who lived within it and how the castle might have looked in the Anglo-Saxon period. Who were these people and what were they doing here at Bamburgh? To find out more, I'm talking to archaeologist and director of the project, Graham Young. Do we know what time period those graves come from? Guys, how do they, uh, how do they determine whether uh, uh, some injury, like say you see like the, the, the damage in the back of the skull, how do they determine whether it's a, if it was a weapon? Obviously, if there's like an arrow head in it, yeah, it, it was an arrow or... Or, but how, how do you know if it wasn't just, it didn't just happen after it was buried, just, or, like, it, you know? Bamburgh. To find out more, 
I'm talking to archaeologist and director of the project, Graham Young. Do we know what time period those graves come from? We think the cemetery site basically is in use from around the early 6th century into the 7th, into the 8th century. Do we know anything about those people? Well, again, we can only go with the evidence we know so far. None of them seem to have gone hungry. They're, they're quite physically robust stature. Their teeth are in an awful condition, which suggests that they're living a little bit too well. So everything about uh, both the skeletons themselves and what we know of them and their location, which is looking straight back at the palace and quite shielded from the village, makes us think we're looking at the, the population of the palace rather than the wider community. We ended up with about eight out of a hundred odd people coming local to Bamburgh. Everyone else is from the wider British Isles or from wider Europe. So we're looking at quite a cosmopolitan population. Are we thinking about potentially Northumbrian royalty being buried here? You're dealing with very high status individuals, but we're in the, the first Christian phase. So they're not buried with goods or treasure. So whether the, the royalty had a separate burial ground or not, we don't know. So they could be here, but we have no way of discerning it. So you had a separate burial ground. Or sort of an odd kind of making like a V of a you'd think there'd be more parallel to but uh, not we don't know so they could be here but we have no way of discerning it one of the most interesting things here is that all of the burials appear to be Christian the majority facing east west with the head at the west end the belief was that on the day of judgment, the dead would sit up in their graves and should be facing east towards Jerusalem. Oswald might only have ruled here for eight years, but Christianity remained, and those who came after him had Christian burials, showing the power of Oswald's determination and faith. So it becomes associated with um, St. Oswald, who is one of the kings, who becomes a saint whose cult was, was quite well known in Europe. He's mostly forgotten these days, but he had cult centers here at Bamber where some of his relics were stored and on the continent. Wait a second. I think this is my background. So he was must have been a pull of, of tourists and pilgrims. We're looking at a royal court that's going to be present intermittently. Also, there's probably trading links, and all of that suggests that this is the reason that people are coming here to Bamburgh. How would the wooden burr have looked in the 7th and 8th centuries when these people were alive here? So it would look more dramatic then. The fortress has always been there because it sits on the rock, so you can't really move it. So today we have this stone fortress, which is a medieval castle rebuilt in the post-medieval period. So if you shorten it a little bit and build it out of timber and fill it with structures, probably very well decorated and likely garishly painted, that would have been our fortress. And we also have evidence from the archeology span that in the lifetime of the cemetery, we go from timber structures that would still have looked very palatial and well built into stone buildings. So that must be a deliberate reference of power. Basically, they're looking how impressive they are that they can build in stone. So it's one of the earliest secular stone building traditions that we think we're seeing. These high status individuals from the castle That's definitely the same castle. What are the chances? These high status individuals from the castle now have a rather special resting place in the church at Bamburgh, where the crypt was in use in the Anglo Saxon period. It's great grass. When we did the excavation of the cemetery site, we did want to put the burials back in the village community from which they'd come from. But we couldn't really do that by putting them back on the, on the cemetery site because it's a triple SI. But fortunately, the, the, the crypt here in the church at Bamburgh, church that, that its origins date back to the same period of our cemetery site, has a crypt which has a partial divide. So we're standing in, in two thirds of it and the other third behind the wall next to us 
So they're all behind this wall now in separate ossuary boxes? Yeah, every individual who we identify goes into an ossuary box. So we're looking at over 100 individuals in, in the end where we've, we've finished the excavation and analysis. And what do we know about those 100 people in terms of the community that live there? Is there a range of ages? Well, it, it is a community. So uh, obviously when you think of a palace, uh, you often think of sort of warriors and kings, but we have complete family groups. So we have all age ranges from, from basically babies all the way through to, to very elderly individuals. And we have a mix of male and female uh, as far as we can tell from their, from their, their biology. And of course, the bones themselves have, have stories to tell because particularly if you've lived a long life, diseases, overindulgence and, and work that you do habitually will leave artifacts and marks on the bone. Quick question. Whenever I pause, I make sure to go back five seconds to not cut off the sentence. Oh, um, question. Uh, if if you were to, I wonder what the average obviously nobody's going to know this but if you took the average age of death of everyone that ever lived I wonder what it would be and I bet because of of high ch uh child mor mortality um I bet you would be like if you averaged it it would probably be like under 10 just because, like, I feel like so many infant deaths must, like, really lowered it. I'm sure if you reached, like, 10 years old, you were much more likely to, you know, maybe make it to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. But uh, I, I, what do you guys think? Indulgence and, and work that you do habitually will leave artifacts and marks on the bones for us to discover. So, I mean, one of the, the, the individuals we have died very violently because we have wet and trauma on the bone, but thankfully that, that seems to be very rare. Each skeleton was given a name by the Bambra Bones project that reflected something Bambra of its story. Bones. Skeleton number 131 was called offslain, an old English word meaning to cut off strike down or destroy. He was excavated here. Unlike most no skeletons head. found at the bowl hole site, he's one of the only skeletons that we have clear evidence for a cause of death. Decapitation. He was struck when he was only about 20 years old by a sharp weapon that cut through the left side of his body. The absence of skeletons with war wounds could tell us that there wasn't a lot of violent battles near Bambra when it was being used as a burr. Most of what we see is just artifacts of life uh, and including some very interesting little insights into what people are, are doing. Um, terrible teeth as a consequence of perhaps overindulging in mead and feasting. But we do have a number of, of female skeletons that have tiny little notches on the, on the, on the front teeth. And it's basically they're using their mouth as a, as a third hand and they're, they're just holding gripping thread. Which if you can imagine if you, how many times you have to do that to actually wear away a little groove in the tooth. So this is someone who's working with cloth sewing, pops tapestry work, probably for their entirety of their adult life, leaving this little artifact behind them. You can see this impact on the body of skeleton number 360, called winsome, which means joy, who was found here. The evidence found on her body highlights that she was in good health and had a long life for nice the period, teeth, it dying seems. in late adulthood. Along with the notches in her teeth, she had poor dental hygiene. The Never mind. I'm like, oh, nice teeth. Never mind. People living at Bambara were wealthy. Their teeth were decaying through their rich diet and their access to sugar. It's just one of those instances where you get this wonderful little insight into, into what the life that people lived. Ah, well, it was an awesome video. That that was quick, really cool. That I can't believe that that we I finally watched a video about a castle that. Uh, damn! Look at that grass. That's nice. Um, really cool. Would love to visit these castles. Any castle, any. We don't have that stuff here. All right, I'm jealous. Um. Yeah, hope you guys are all doing well. If you could answer any of my questions, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you've ever been here, I'd love to see your 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 comments, any comments at all. Um, super happy when I when I see them. Hope you guys are doing well. Catch you guys next time. We'll, we will continue to learn. Bye, guys.